before all time, there was the noon, a sea of chaos, where all forms of what was to be lay hidden. Within the heart of the living noon stirred the spirit of the waters, the great snake, Ape. From the coils of Ape sprang Atum, the first god of creation and the one became two. Apep embraced Atum in his coils, binding tightly to his second nature, trying to become one with himself again. But Atum transformed himself in the folds of Apep into the scarab god of becoming and broke free of his embrace. Apep, the serpent of chaos, fought to return with Atum to the heart of the noon. But Atum overpowered Apep. Lying now alone in the waters, Atum thought of his children to be. In his heart, he created their names and spoke them. Shu, the air, Tefnut, the moisture, and they were given form. Shu and Tefnut embraced their father, Atum, then left him to explore the limits of the noon. they ventured too far. Atum took the divine power of his eye and sent it to light their way home.
Atu could not be without the light of his eye. A new eye grew in its place, and in this new eye, Atu saw the return of his children. When the first eye returned, she was in fury at the one who had taken her place and tried to destroy it. But Atum placed her on his brow as his royal protector. In his heart, Atum created the first dry land the mound, and with his children, Shu and Tevnut, brought it into being. From the mound, Atum spoke the name of his soul bird, Benu, the phoenix. Benu landed on the first dry land and laid his egg. which was the lotus bud of the dawn of creation. From the heart of the lotus were born the many forms of the sun god, the divine light. Atum joined with the light of his creation and Ra came into being. The light of Ra dispelled the darkness of the moon. On the mound, Shu and Tefnut gave rise to Geb, the earth, and Nut the starry night sky. Nut swallowed Ra, who came between her and the embrace of her brother, Earth. Together, Geb and Nut conceived five children, but they could not be born till Shu, the heir, raised his daughter, the night sky, from the earth so that the star children could break free. The star children were Osiris, god of the corn and of renewal, and his sisters Isis and Nephthys, and their jealous brother Set. was beloved of his sisters. But Set claimed Nephthys for his own. Osiris and Isis were lovers.
From the divine corn sprang the first seeds of creation which landed in the black earth. And the land of Egypt came into being. Isis drew down the waters of the heavenly Nile to give life to the land of Egypt. The waters rose and Osiris called forth the first garden. Osiris and Isis were lord and queen of this divine garden, and their sister Nephthys came to be with them there. But Set was jealous of the creative powers of Osiris, and of the love Nephthys bore him. He blasted the garden with a raging sandstorm, turning the good black earth into dirt. Set wanted also to destroy his brother Osiris, and they fought. When Osiris rested in his form of Lord of the Corn, Set cut him to pieces. and scattered the pieces to the four corners of Egypt. One piece of Osiris fell in the waters of the Nile and was swallowed by a fish. gathered up by Isis and Nephthys, who sprinkled the dismembered body of their brother with the water of life. Isis invoked the jackal-headed god Anubis, lord of embalming, to come and restore the form of Osiris. Anubis tightly bound the flesh of Osiris and created the first mummy. Which was covered by the first coffin. Isis 
sent her sister and Anubis away so that she could be alone with Osiris. She transformed herself into a kite and with her wings fanned life into Osiris and through her magic restored to him for one night only the vitality of his manhood. conceived. Set learned of the conception of this son and came to disrupt the union. But Isis escaped. She flew to the hidden waters of the Delta to keep her unborn child safe from the destructive powers of Set. And Horus was born. As he grew, Isis told Horus of the death of his father at the hand of his own brother. Horus vowed to avenge Osiris. <coughs> Horus faced Set. Two equally balanced forces, and they fought. Horus took the divine form of Falcon, and Set transformed himself through all the aspects of his nature to find a form which would conquer Horus. The eyes of Horus were the sun and the moon. Set destroyed the moon. And all was in darkness. Horus broke free.
and hunted Set through the length of Egypt with his divine harpoon. set were too evenly matched. So they called upon Thoth, Lord of sacred knowledge and keeper of the scales of justice, to pronounce upon the winner. The hearts of Horus and Set spoke of all things, and the divine scales could not settle on a balance. Atum was called upon to be the final judge. Set could not resist a last attack on Horus. And the royal protector of Atum dispelled him leaving Horus as the Chosen One. Horus was crowned. The first Pharaoh of the land of Egypt. his mother Isis, raised up Osiris and performed the rites of the dead. Horus opened the mouth of Osiris to let in the breath of life. Osiris was transfigured. in his resurrected form became the Lord of the Underworld. Through his resurrection, Osiris brought divine truth and new life. lighting the underworld as Ra lights the heavens. The light of Ra, the light of Osiris, is swallowed by the Divine Mother of Night.
each dawn she gives birth once more to the sun. The light and the life of Egypt.